super special and exciting so let's waste no time getting into it. First, taking a dampened beauty sponge and a foundation of your choice, apply this all over your face and down your neck to ensure a cohesive, flawless canvas to work on. Use dabbing motions rather than swiping in order to get the most coverage out of your foundation and using a damp sponge will help make it so not as much product is absorbed into the sponge. After that, don't forget to set your face using a translucent powder using either a makeup puff or like me with a large fluffy brush. Moving straight onto the eyes, take any eye primer that you prefer and apply this on your eyelid all the way up to your brow bone. I prefer to do this using my ring finger, but if you would rather apply it with a brush, go on ahead. To set this primer and neutralize the color, take either a nude or an off-white shadow and apply this all over your lid up to your brow bone using a flat, dense brush. To set even more of a base for our shadows, I'm applying a silver cream eyeshadow into the inner half of my lid and then a shimmery blue into the outer half of my lid. Don't worry about making this too neat because next we are going to be taking a mixture of two blue eyeshadows and applying this on top of the blue cream pencil. If your shadows have a shimmer to them like mine, try to pat on the shadow rather than swipe to not only improve pigmentation but to also prevent any fallout. Then, taking a deep purple eyeshadow on a smaller brush, I'm applying this into the very outer corner to begin to define our eyes. I'm packing this color on quite a bit before taking a mixture of a taupe shadow and a maroon shadow and beginning to blend this into our crease. Start with a little bit of product at first and then be sure to add more. Don't be too afraid about blending too much. Blending is your friend, especially with a look like this. Then, taking those same eyeshadows that we used from the lid, I'm taking the purple, applying this into the outer corner, and then the blue and applying it to the inner half, and I'm really trying to fade these into each other. To highlight the inner corner, I'm taking this beautiful shimmery silver eyeshadow and applying this with my pinky finger. For the brows, go ahead and take a spoolie just to brush through them first, and if you have naturally darker brows, just fill them in as per usual, but for anyone with lighter hair like I do, you might want to go in with a dark brown or black eyeshadow like I'm using. I'm just taking this on a small angled brush and lightly applying this into my brows, making sure to add a strong defined arch. any eyeliner of your choice, I'm just using a liquid liner. Begin by lining your upper lid with a thin line, making sure to build it more towards the outer end and keeping it very thin towards your inner corner. Once you are happy with that line, go ahead and wing your liner out by creating a small line that is angled upwards and then dragging that back in it to meet with the other line. And if you're feeling a bit more daring, go ahead and add a small one to the inner corner. To further define the eyes, add a pair of wispy natural lashes as close to the lash line as you can get it after letting the glue become tacky, which is after about 30 seconds. Don't forget to highlight your brow bone using the same highlighter that you used on your inner corner. And then for a bit of extra sparkle and shine, I added a rhinestone into the outer corner of each eye right below our wing. Make sure you apply at least a coat or two of mascara to your upper and lower lashes to not only blend them with the falsies, but also to define the lower lash line. Now for one of my favorite parts, creating the fish scale effect that will be on our temple and our cheekbones. Taking either a fishnet stocking or a hairnet, stretch this over the area that you wanted these scales to be on, then taking a blue eyeshadow, tap this onto the fishnet followed by a purple. You're going to want to tap the shadow on rather than swipe it or else you're not going to get the scale like effect. And on the cheekbones, I went ahead and tapped on a bit of the highlight as well to lift and accentuate the scales in this area. With that all 
all done, it is time to move on to the large mouth for the second part of this tutorial. After applying some lip balm, I'm going in with my foundation to block out my lips, and then I am applying a translucent powder on top of that to set it. Using either a body paint or a cream eyeshadow, really anything you have on hand, take a small detailed brush and begin to draw in your teeth. I found it the easiest to start on the outer corners of your lips and move in from there in order to keep it all as symmetrical as possible. As you draw the teeth, try to keep your lips pursed because that will make it easier for you to line up the tops of the teeth and make it so the gums are a lot easier to draw in later. This entire step is just all trial and error. I did this about twice before actually filming this tutorial to get it right, so don't be afraid if you have to go back a few times to make sure the teeth are looking the way you want them to. In order to draw the teeth, try and think of almost an icicle-like shape or an upside-down candy corn. Once you have a complete upper set of teeth, draw imaginary lines extending down from the teeth on the very outer sides down onto your neck right above your collarbone and this will ensure that both the top set of teeth and the bottom sets of teeth are equal in width. From there, just draw in the teeth the same way that you did them on the upper bit. I did try and make them a bit more pointy than the top lips were. Once you are happy with your teeth, take a black cream eyeshadow or a body paint and outline each tooth, but don't worry about lining the area where the gums would be, we will get to that later. Just worry about filling these in. It doesn't also have to be too perfect because these are just kind of guidelines for us to make sure we don't go over when we go and fill in the entire rest of the mouth black. <laughs> Next, taking a black eyeshadow, draw two little lines extending down from the outer teeth on each side. Don't worry about making this too perfect, it's just a guideline, again, for what we'll be filling in later on. Taking either a red lipstick or whatever you have on hand, begin to outline the gums. Try to keep this line slightly on the thinner side and curve it with the curves of the teeth that you drew in. And of course you're going to want to set this, so go in with a red eyeshadow and lightly apply this on top. I'm also swiping it slightly on to the very ends of the teeth where it connects to the gums to add a slight red discoloration. also discolored the teeth because they aren't a pristine white. I'm taking an off-white slash pale yellow powder and just tapping this right on top of the teeth. Next, draw a rainbow-like curve that sits right below the middle of the upper set of the teeth using a red lipstick, red body paint, whatever, and make sure you use a small detail brush to really make sure these lines are clean. Then once you are done filling that in, go ahead and draw a similar shape below the lower set of teeth. But make sure to draw it upside down in comparison to the one you just drew. Fill that in and then connect the upper and lower parts with straight lines going right on down before filling it entirely in. If you've entirely filled it in, make sure to go ahead and set it with a red eyeshadow using a flat, dense brush to really pack it on. But fill in all of this empty space that we have left. Take a black cream eyeshadow, cream body paint to fill it all in. Be sure to take extra precaution when you are around the teeth and the mouth because you really don't want to alter those shapes too much or really any at all. Try to apply this product as evenly as you can and of course straighten out those side lines that we left earlier to really clean it all up. Since this is an area of motion and it was a cream product, make sure you take a deep dark black eyeshadow to set this padded right on to the area rather than swiping it to ensure that you get the deepest, darkest, most matte black as you possibly can. Taking an assortment of blending brushes in my contour kit, I'm making all of these small details that really make this come to life. I'm taking a little bit of contour powder on the smallest blending brush that I have and drawing lines over the smile lines that I've got around the upper and lower gums to create the illusion of the new raised lips. 
and down both sides of the mouth to show the outer lines of that, as well as a brand new jawline right under the lower lip that kind of goes on top of the collarbone. And then I'm going over all of those lines with the black eyeshadow, adding a few more that I didn't add before. But this step is just to further define those lines, make them stand out a bit more, and just make it come even more to life. Make sure that you keep blending these lines out constantly because even though we want them accentuated, we don't want them to be harsh. Finally, to add the dimension to the tongue, take a brown shadow and apply this onto the upper part of the lip in an M shape and then blend the shadow down onto the bottom part of the lip in more of a W shape, but try not to make it as noticeable. Feel free to also slim down the sides of the tongue a little bit more by blending a little bit of shadow there. And with that, you have completed this tutorial. You have now created your very own Beauty of the Deep. to me. This is my sixth annual NYX Face Awards entry video. I am so pumped. I worked so long and hard planning this and executing it and filming it for you guys and editing it and I really do hope you like it. If you do like it, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and share it with all of your friends and your family too. And if you want to see more of my videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you never miss out on one. Once more, thank you for watching. It means so much to me. I will talk to you guys all next time. Until then, peace out. Bye.